After living most of my life hating to read, I picked up the habit recently to read for my own personal growth about three years ago and something that I don't talk about enough on this channel are books that I find extremely valuable. When I started reading for my own personal growth, it got very addicting because I applied what I read and I started seeing almost immediate results within myself. It sharpened my mind and completely changed my way of thinking to the point of me making different decisions that have changed my life in the best way possible. What's up, man? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, so you can continue to better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. On this channel, I talk about saving money, making more money, getting out of debt, and I talk about various personal growth topics, and I give my own experiences to serve as a motivation to you. With that said, let's get into the video. By the way, all of these books are going to be linked in the description. So we're gonna jump straight into it. The first book that I wanna talk about that has changed my life is a book called Leadership and Self-Deception by the Arbinger Institute. This book is really cool because for one, it's a fiction and it's, it's based on an imaginary situation, but it also speaks on real issues and it speaks on real psychology. It's based off of an imaginary company with imaginary people, but these people have real issues and it talks about inside and outside of work types of issues. And the reason why I even read this book in the first place is because when I started off as a leader, it was the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. And I just wanted to read as many leadership books as possible. And the ironic thing about this book is is it doesn't so much focus on leadership, it more so focuses on self-reflection. And it, it brings up two very important topics that a lot of people aren't even aware of in their everyday lives. Starting off with number one, it's self-deception. Self-deception is something that literally everybody in the world has or has had at one point. And all self-deception is, is when you look at other people and you don't see them as people. You see them as objects or obstacles that are in your way. It, it comes to a point where you see yourself and your needs as more important than other people just because of whatever story you're telling yourself at that given moment. And when you begin to think like that, you're putting yourself within what is called a box. And when you're in the box, it's when you completely just see things your way and only your way and nothing else matters pretty much. So if you've ever cut in line at a coffee shop or a restaurant or something, or any type of line that you can think of, it's because you're telling yourself, my time is more important than the person that's in front of me. And, and, and the story you're telling yourself could be, I'm in a rush to get to work. I'm in a rush to get to a function. But you don't know what the person in front of you has going on in their lives. I mean, literally this morning I watched somebody self-deceive. There was a food truck on the right side in one parking spot. So obviously on the left, there's an empty parking spot so that there can be a line going to that food truck. This dude did not have any regard for who was in the line and he proceeded to back his truck up into the parking spot, forcing those people to move out of the way. At that moment, he felt that whatever need he had was more important than the other people. And he clearly did not see those people as people because he didn't honk his horn. He didn't give any kind of warning. He literally just backed his truck up. And he, he just did not care. Got out of the car, didn't say hello, nothing. I mean, that is self-deception. And this whole way of thinking comes from one thing and one thing only. And that's self-betrayal. When you betray yourself, that's when you do something that contradicts what you know you should be doing for another person. And the reason self-betrayal is such a big deal is because of the fact that when you habitually betray yourself, then you're betraying others too because we all have this thing that's inside of us that tells us, hey, you need to help this person. If you see that somebody dropped something, it's the same thing that's within you that says, I should help them pick up these books that they just dropped. It's the same thing that's in you when you see somebody carrying a bunch of, a bunch of books or a bunch of pizzas in their hand or something, then there's a door that they're going into or, or like a bunch of heavy luggage. Something within you says, hey, open that door for them. And when you choose to ignore that voice, then you're justifying why you're not doing it so you don't feel bad. And when you do that, you automatically minimize your faults. You're like, well, I'm, I'm busy. I, I, was, I, was heading, I was heading to work. I'm, I'm running late. Whereas this person who know, and then you start to amplify there's like, well, if they're, if they're carrying all this stuff, they should have brought somebody along with them. And you're giving these excuses to justify your behavior. And the big problem with 
self-betrayal is it mostly happens with people that you personally know, like your parents, your siblings, your significant other. So there's an example in this book where there's this couple and they just had a newborn baby and now, you know, the baby's crying every night. The husband works hard. The wife works hard, but the husband has this urge. I need to go in there, calm our baby down so my wife can get some sleep. And that's, that's his initial thought. But then he proceeds to roll over and just let the baby keep crying until the wife decides to get up and calm the baby down and and put the baby back to sleep. And, and, you know, in that moment, he's telling himself, I work hard. I worked 40 hours this week. I'm tired. She can do it. She's been home all day. She doesn't have anything she has to do. And when you keep telling yourself like that, you start to see the other person in the negative light more and more and more. And I've seen this within my own life. Minor annoyances become bigger annoyances. And when you tell yourself these things, now all of a sudden you're blaming this person. Now, now in the book, the dude's calling his wife lazy for not getting up earlier to go take care of the baby and he's beginning to minimize his faults and amplifying her faults and he's beginning to blame her and point fingers at her and when you do that you're in the box and when you're in the box that invites other people to get in the box so now both of y'all are in the box because now that you're blaming your wife and pointing your fingers at your wife and now you're saying things to your wife now she's telling you hey now, now she's telling you what you're not doing and now then both of y'all are arguing and now both of you are failing to see each other as people you're just seeing each other as objects or annoyances within your own lives but yeah so they spend the rest of the book talking about getting out of the box and what you can do to not self-deceive what you can do to not self-betray when you do this it makes you become a better person who reflects on your own actions and that in turn makes you a better leader and that's why i value that book so so much as you know this is a personal finance and a personal growth channel so i had to throw in a financial book in there it's called the Mill Millionaire Fast Lane by MJ DeMarco. Phenomenal read. And to me, this sticks out more than books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or Think and Grow Rich, because to me, it focuses on the entire mindset behind what it means to get rich. And it really challenges the average way of thinking. And it does so by breaking down the three different lanes that we have in life. And that's the fast lane, the slow lane, and the sidewalk. And that's basically the rich, the middle class, and the poor, respectively. And the sidewalk are the people who just kind of take life day by day. They're living paycheck to paycheck. They don't have any wealth saved. There's no 401ks. It's just, they're just surviving. And then the slow lane is the, the investors who they, they, they save 10% of their earnings every single year. And, and they keep doing that for the next 40 years. On, in addition to that, they have a 401k, Roth IRAs and stuff like that. And, and that's, you know, that's how you get rich in 40 years. And then there's the fast lane where in, you know, two to 10 years, you're seeing ridiculous results. And the whole mindset behind the book is there is a such thing as getting rich quick, but there is no such thing as getting rich easy. When a college football player signs a contract with the NFL, guess what? They just hit big. When you invent something and you patent it and you release it out to the world and millions of people buy it, guess what? you just hit big. When you build a business and you sell it to a much, much, much bigger business like Facebook or Microsoft or even Amazon for $30 million, guess what? You just hit big. So these things happen very fast. These things happen, these things can happen in five to 10 years easily. It doesn't take 40 years to do it, but when you do it, it builds in a massive, a massive stream of income for you. Now, none of those things are easy. It's definitely not easy to become an NFL player. It's definitely not easy to build your own business. It's not easy to build a business that's so big and so good that bigger businesses want it, but these things are possible. And that's really what the book thrives on. It, it What it does is it builds a mindset of doing things more effectively, saying that, hey, you don't have to do it the long way. You can do it a shorter way. It's much tougher but it's much more rewarding. But the outcome will quadruple the impact of what you could get by being in the slow lane when you choose to be in the fast lane. I'm sure you've heard the story of Abraham Lincoln in the trees and he says that if I had seven hours to chop down a tree, I would spend six sharpening my ax. So the fast lane is spending majority of that time sharpening your ax so you have an easier cut. Whereas the person with just who just has an axe and he's chopping down the tree, sure, he's, he starts right away, but he doesn't get it chopped down in seven hours. It takes him 24 hours to chop down the tree because his axe is getting dull and he's not sharpening it. He just keeps hitting and hitting and hitting and just hoping for more results. Person in the fast lane, they've, they have a super sharp axe, so two chops and the tree's down. 
Easy. They chop the tree down in a significantly shorter amount of time. And, and the, the relation to life with this is you can spend your time building something that is big, that is sharper, so to speak, that gives you that easier life down the road. It might take you five years to build it. After that five years is up and the ax is super sharp, you have a much shorter time that's gonna take you to build a massive stream of income. And, and the, the slow lane is go to school, work for 40 years, invest in the 401k, invest in some company stocks. That's the way to make money. It's the slow way though. And bro, there's many individuals who are in that slow lane who are frustrated because they've been working for the past 30 to 40 years who haven't gotten a raise, but they, that's, they feel like that's their only option because they don't know about the fast lane. And that's why it stuck out to me because I, I consider myself to be an ambitious person that just doesn't want to stick to one way of making money. I want to diversify. I want to have investments. I want to have a business. I want to have you know all these different pockets of money because it's very important to me to have different streams of income. And that really just, that that's changed my perspective because, because you have other financial books that focus on you know, the next 40 years, but this book is for those ambitious guys who really, really want it, who really want to have some massive results in their lives and be able to take it easy after putting in all the work and that are willing to do the work. To me, that's super powerful and it stands for everything that I stand for. So that's why I would highly recommend reading that book. And I just know from experience because, you know, in one of my latest videos, I talked about my horrible experience with my first high paying job. Sure, everyone looks at that as, yeah, that's a great paying job keep doing it, keep doing it, keep going. But to me, it was the worst experience I've ever had. I don't want to experience that for 40 years. Why do that when you, when I, when I could spend five years of my life building something that's powerful, that's going to add value to life. And something that the book really touches on is something called the law of affection. And the law of affection is focusing on impacting as many people as possible. People ask all the time, why do football players make more than doctors? Why do football players make more than lawyers? Guess what, bro? How many, how many patients can a doctor see at once? How many patients does a doctor go through a day? They're limited based upon time. They might be the best doctor in the world, but guess what? How many people can they impact at once? If you're at work and you can only see one patient at a time, and let's say each visit takes 30 minutes and you only work eight hours per day, how many people are you seeing in one day? And how many people are you seeing within a year? You see two people, for, you see two people per hour for eight hours at 16 people a day. So at the very most, assuming that this doctor takes no vacation whatsoever, but they have every weekend off, well, guess what? They only get to see about 4,300 people per year. But a music artist, their music hits thousands of people a day millions of people a day several hundreds of thousands of people watch football every time there's a game ceos run businesses that create products that reach hundreds of millions of people every single day that's the law of affection because they're able to add value and reach so many people so regularly that's why they make so much more money than the highly respected professions. And I don't know, and I don't know, man, maybe I'm just weird, but stuff like that really speaks to me and it really changes my perspective. It makes me think about what I can do better and how I can add more value. Okay, bro, you ready for this? This book right here? This book right here? That's life change right there. So, so before we get to why this book is such a life changer for me, I'm gonna tell you a quick story. So one day I was sitting down with a friend of mine and we just got into a really deep discussion and it ended in him asking me, Reggie, what do you think your purpose is in life? Fair question. I didn't know how to answer it. I pretty much just stared at him with the blankest stare ever and I, I, I didn't know how to answer that. And because I couldn't answer that, I felt really bad and I couldn't help but ponder on that question. It was days, it was weeks, it was months. I was like, I don't know what my purpose is. And when you don't have, when you don't know what your purpose is, you don't have a vision for your life. And I didn't have a vision because I grew up under the notion that you go to school, you get good grades, you get a good job, you get paid, you go home, you relax, you eat, you sleep, you work, you die. That's pretty much it. Like I, I didn't spend time thinking 
about myself outside of what I'm doing. My Most of my life's focus has been, what do you do? Not so much, how are you doing? Not so much, what is your purpose? Not so much, how are you gonna work on yourself to improve personally? Not so much, how are you going to impact other people's lives? It was more of, what are you doing? What are you going to school for? What do you wanna do at work? How much money do you want to make? And so I've never built that mental file of I have a purpose in life. At at that point in time, I hadn't thought about what Reggie's purpose is in life. I just didn't. I didn't think about how I could help other people in their lives improve and reach their goals and reach to where they want to get to and show them what is possible. I just kind of had a I had a very one-dimensional way of thinking. I only thought of, thought of life in one way. So I developed that deeper way of thinking. And, and The Principles and Power of Vision, that book built that foundation. It talks about beginning with the end in mind, no matter what you do. Instead of just you know going through school without any real purpose, because I was just going to school to get good grades so I could get into college. And then I just, I picked a major that I knew I would be good at that would pay a decent amount of money that I wasn't necessarily passionate about. I went through school studying and studying and studying and working and working and working, right? Got the job that I wanted, completely fell flat on my face. Didn't think about my purpose one time throughout that entire process. I just thought about reaching that goal. I didn't think about why that was my goal. I just knew I wanted to make money. I knew I didn't want to depend on my parents. Period. I know I wanted to live on my own. I know I wanted to be considered successful. My purpose? Completely absent. My vision for my life was just like everybody else's vision for their lives. Work for 40 years, make a really good salary, spend majority of my time at work, build a family, have kids, get married, buy a house make six figures. There was no substance behind that. That's just kind of what, I mean, if you talk to any guy, that's probably what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? But when you think about purpose and you think about vision, you think about, first of all, yourself. What, what is your vision for the next 10 years for yourself? Most people would say, get a promotion. Most guys would say, get married, have kids. But that just shows that the that absence of, of thinking, we're all kind of stuck in a mindset that we have not been freed from. A lot of us have been born into, so to speak, this mindset. And because of that, it, it, it creates a culture of narrow-mindedness where no one really thinks about what their impact could be. You ask somebody passing by what you think their purpose is, do you think they're going to know what their purpose is? Because I guarantee you, if you ask 10 different people, nine of them will tell you they don't know. Because no one takes the time to think about their purpose because everyone is so preoccupied. I know I'm generalizing here, but I'm. this is true. Everyone is so preoccupied with societal norms. Everyone is so preoccupied with going to work, going to school, getting that status quo, impressing everybody, maintaining an image that where's the purpose in that? We look at We look at those with financial issues that are buying these cars, right? Buying these new shoes, buying gigantic flat screen TVs, but they have $12,000 of credit card debt on the side. They're not thinking about their purpose. They're not thinking about their future. They're thinking in the now. And if you're thinking in the now, that that shows that you don't have a vision For yourself, because if you had a vision, that means you now have a plan for your future. That means you're going to act accordingly based off of those beliefs that you have for your future. When I broke out of that way of thinking, I really started to think about what am I good at? What can I help other people with? When you look within yourself, you figure out how you can help other people out. Guess what? I know what my purpose is, and I've been living out that purpose ever since I read this book. I didn't figure out what my purpose was in one day, I just didn't. It took me months and months and months of vigorously trying to figure out what is my purpose. And what I'm saying is this book completely changed my perspective about life, about myself, about why I do what I do, 
because I was at one point I was on autopilot aimlessly just working just because I felt like I was supposed to just be working all the time at work, you know, working all this overtime until I got trapped into being forced to literally work overtime. And then when all I had to, when all I had time to do was go home, eat, sleep, and go to work, it registered very fast. What is my purpose in life? Why am I doing this? Is this what the rest of my life is going to look like? Just going to work all the time? Being, being, you know, essentially just being a slave to the corporate world? Is, is that what this is all about? This book goes over why we exist. We exist for a reason. God put us on this earth for a reason. We're not just here to do what everyone else is doing. You're here for a unique reason and purpose. Some people are good at speaking. Some people are good at impacting others. Some people are good at motivating. Some people are good at all of those. Some people are good at basketball. Some people are good at football. What are you good at, bro? What are you passionate about, bro? How do you want to impact other people, bro? That's what I had to ask myself because I didn't know. I was so focused on reaching societal norms, getting that house, getting that job, getting that degree, that I didn't look at the bigger picture of what I could be doing in addition to that. In the moment that mindset just flipped, everything changed. That thought process changed. Therefore, my actions and decision-making changed. I started doing things that I've never done before, and I've gotten results like I've never gotten before. But anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Continue to better yourself so that you can live on your own terms. Thanks so much for watching this video. Stay cold.